This SID Lab tutorial talks about transmission loss, insertion loss, the difference between the two, and the effect of muffler location on the radiated noise. Suppose we start with a simple model of an expansion chamber using the expansion chamber element. Attached to that expansion chamber is a pipe upstream and downstream. Now suppose we want to calculate the transmission loss of the, this muffler. So we go to the calculation screen. We do a calculation of acoustics. And we see repeated here is typical low behavior uh, in the transmission loss of an expansion chamber. Now suppose we want to know uh, what happens if we move the muffler in this system. Right now we have the upstream piping length of 20 and we have the downstream piping length of 30. But suppose we want to move it uh, downstream 10 inches. So that would means we would subtract 10 inches from the downstream pipe, making that 20. And we'll make the upstream pipe 30 inches. So the length of the entire system is the same, but we have effectively moved the muffler uh, within the system. So we go back to the calculation screen. We do a uh, hold on the plot and we recalculate the acoustics. Now, we see no difference. Why is that? That's because transmission loss is not affected by the length of the up, up and downstream piping. It is only a function of uh, the geometry in the muffler itself. So how do we find the effect of the piping up and downstream uh, so that we can calculate insertion loss? Well, SIDLAB has single port elements here. So insertion loss is the uh, performance of the entire system, not just the muffler itself. So it would be a function of not only these pipe lengths, but also the source impedance and the end impedance. So let's bring in a constant impedance source. Now in general, source impedance would be a function of frequency, but in this case we'll keep it simple. We'll give it uh, a real value of 1. We won't give it an imaginary value for impedance, although we could. Uh, and then we also need to match it to the diameter of the upstream piping. In this case, uh, the diameter is 1.5 inches. In like manner, we go to the open end pipe to put it at the end, end of the system. We again match the diameter of 1.5 inches. And now we have to connect the source impedance to the model and the end impedance to the model. So notice that the source impedance and the end impedance go before the green dot and at the other end after the red dot. Now we go back to the calculation screen. We calculate acoustics again. Notice again that the transmission loss is the same. We would expect that. Although now the insertion loss is no longer grayed out. So we calculate the insertion loss and there you have it. Uh, notice that the insertion loss follows the general trend of the lobes, but it also add lobes, adds lobes and it creates maxima and minima. Another thing to notice about insertion loss is that it can actually increase the length of the, or it, it can increase the sound coming out of the system. In other words, amplify it. So now let's go back and uh, move the muffler in the system again and see what happens. So this is the insertion loss for the current system, which is 30 inches on the upstream pipe and 20 inches in the downstream pipe. So now we'll go back and make the downstream pipe 30 inches and make the upstream pipe 20 inches long, effectively moving the muffler. And we'll see what effect that has on the insertion loss of the muffler.
calculate acoustics again, having held the graphs. And we get a different result for the insertion loss. It still has low behavior. It still follows the general trends. But the minima have been moved. So if your engine orders are lining up with any of these maxima or minima, uh, it can change uh, the amount of radiated noise depending on uh, where these occur in frequency. That ends the tutorial on transmission loss and insertion loss.